Goedendag en alvast een zalig kerstfeest gewenst. In de loop van de avond wordt het dan toch een beetje rustiger. De laatste buien verlaten ons land en trekken richting Duitsland. De rest van de nacht verloopt droog met minima tussen 2 en 7 graden. Morgen in de vroege ochtend is het misschien nog eventjes droog, maar het duurt niet lang voordat die buienkarousel weer op gang komt. Vanuit het noorden denderen die buien over ons land met regen, met rukwinden van een 70, 80 km per uur, met hagel en Onweer. Er zijn nog een paar opklaringen, maar het is toch wel nadrukkelijk bewolkt. En daarbij halen we temperaturen van zo'n 8, 9 graden. Und das ist auch heute der Fall gewesen. Hier eine weitere Superzelle aufgenommen von Benedikt Schmidt bei Ingolstadt. Und auch im Main-Taunus-Kreis ging es wild zu und her, was Sie hier sehen. Der starke Regen. Teilweise sind 100 und mehr Liter auf den Quadratmeter innerhalb weniger Stunden gefallen. Knietiefes Wasser, die Autos kommen kaum durch. Und natürlich ist dann auch die Kanalisation vollkommen überfordert. Und wenn wir mal auf den Radarfilm schauen, dann sehen Sie hier von Westen in verschiedenen Staffeln kommen die Unwetter reingezogen, gerade auch hier über Sachsen-Anhalt jetzt ein Schwergewitter weiter unterwegs nach Osten und das wird uns in der Nacht beschäftigen, gerade in der Osthälfte, dort kommt die Front dann an, drum auch gerade für Berlin, für Brandenburg, für Sachsen-Anhalt bestehende Tornado-Warnung, die Temperatur sinkt hier teilweise auf nur 22, 23 Grad, es ist eine Tropennacht, im Westen, da lockert es dann auf, die Werte dann um 17 Grad. Now, these are warnings that would be given out by the South African Weather Service. Now, you'll see that there's possibilities of heavy rainfall that I just showed you in just a second. And then, again, hot and dry conditions there could also lead to failed fires, could lead to crops also being damaged along the northeastern parts. Again, possibilities of rainfall. And you'll see, when you look at the northeastern parts again, the severe rainfall that we should expect there, and this could lead to lots and lots of flooding of tourist areas, lots of economic loss along the Limpopo regions, as well as over some parts of Mozambique. If you look at the Mozambique, big channels, the low pressure cells that are expected there, those could lead to heavy rainfalls. Si Rubina, ang pinakamalakas na bagyo na maglalandfall sa bansa ngayong 2050 at ang pinakamalakas na rin para sa Mindanao sa loob ng limang taon. Yan na muna ang latest tungkol kay Typhoon Ruby mula sa Action Weather Center. Ako po si Leah Cruz. The weather report you've just seen is set in 2050 and it's just a possibility given the direction that the world is taking now. Things may actually turn out to be much worse. The Philippines is a nation made up of 7,107 islands with around 36,000 kilometers of shoreline. We are also the third most disaster prone country in the world and we experience an average of 20 storms every year, 90% of which affect the country. Now, as Miami deals with flooding, Chicago is feeling the heat. Ironically, this is the first full day of fall, and this is day five of triple digit temperatures. This late season heat wave puts us on pace for the hottest September on record. If it verifies, it will be the third warmest September in the past 12 years. So let's take a look at the forecast temperatures for today. At Navy Pier, 96 degrees, just a short walk to Michigan Avenue, and the temperature jumps to 99. Willis Tower will top out at 101 and Wrigley Field 99 degrees. The heat is a huge factor in tonight's Cubs game against Canada's Alberta Clippers. Edmonton, like many northern cities, is one of the fastest growing right now due in part to the pleasantly mild fall temperatures in the upper 60s. Dry and hot air coming from the Karahari Desert has continued advancing into Zambia and drying much of the southwestern parts of the country limiting the intertropical convergence zone to the northern parts of the country. And the forecast for this morning, sunny weather conditions over the southwestern parts is expected with temperatures ranging from 11 to 12 degrees Celsius elsewhere. It will be partly cloudy with the temperatures ranging from 17 over Sulawesi to 24 degrees Celsius over Chipata.仙台では
断続的ではありますが、10月の上旬まで続くとみられます。Mesdames et messieurs, revenons sur les températures moyennes de notre pays. Entre 1860 et l'an 2000, les températures ont évolué en hausse de 1 à 2 degrés centigrades. À partir des années 2000, nous avons observé donc entre 28 Et 29 degrés de température moyenne sur l'ensemble du territoire burkinabé. Quant aux précipitations, il est à noter qu'entre 1990 et l'an 2010, nous avons observé dans la zone sahélienne autour de 500 mm d'eau, dans la zone soudano-sahélienne autour de 800 mm d'eau et dans la zone soudanienne autour de 1000 mm d'eau tombée. Ce qui veut dire que autour des années 2050 Ces phénomènes extrêmes vont toujours se maintenir, fortes précipitations et probabilité de sécheresse également. Comme ça, il y a un petit peu de temps pour le faire 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 og gæti stytt upp um tíma hér fyrir norð, austan og jafnvel sést til sólar, en þó verður rigning meginhlutana deginum þar. Þrátt fyrir vætu tíð þá stefnir í skaplegasta veður, hægan vind og þó nokkuð hlýtt víðast hvar og gæti hittin farið víða hér fyrir austan og norð, austan yfir 20 stegin. Það stefnir þó ekki að nýtt landsitamett sem sett var í síðustu viku, 32,2 stig í húsafelli, að það verði slegið núna í bráð. And according to the climate change, we are going to experience difficult, different impacts, including malaria, which is going to be the biggest problem for the entire country. Food insecurity for both for humans and livestock, as well we are going to have food shortage. This is going to be a problem for both people over the urban areas and the rural areas. Otherwise, other sectors like energy and tourism will be affected. As you can see, example of Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the beautiful mountain in Africa with the beautiful ice cap on top of it, is going to deplete, and the greener part around it is going to completely be washed away. And the animal, the wildlife, you can see are in. Desperate condition as they are looking for food and the, for water. На връх Рожен и днес максималната температура ще достига 36 градуса. Звучи ви невероятно, но дори и фантастичните прогнози вече се превръщат в реалност. Катастрофални наводнения в България и Сърбия. Пагубна градушка в Западна България. 20 градуса през януари у нас. Опустошителни торнада в Северна Америка. Невиждани студове отвъд Атлантика. Какво става с времето? So I expect this morning that we have quite sunny weather in Denmark. Temperature is about 20 degrees, so it feels very warm and of course also humid. But during the forenoon and especially in the afternoon, I expect uh, thunderstorms developing over northern Germany, and from there it will move to the southern part of Denmark. These thunderstorms may be quite heavy and giving a uh, risk of uh, flooding in uh, main cities, of course. So citizens are advised to take care of property and basements, and also look out for thunder clouds and look out also for small tornadoes, which may be a risk in these heavy thunderstorms. The temperature. It's expected to rise to about 35 degrees. Olá, bom dia. Segue chovendo muito na região sul do Brasil e no oeste da Amazônia neste 8 de junho de 2050. Nuvens carregadas devem provocar temporais com ventos fortes hoje à tarde nessas regiões. O motivo para toda essa chuva é o transporte de um ar quente e úmido em direção a essas áreas. Em poucos dias, o acumulado de chuva deve ultrapassar a média esperada para todo mês, o que aumenta o risco de alagamentos e também de enxurradas. Já no nordeste do país e no leste da Amazônia, o cenário é completamente diferente. O tempo fica seco, sem possibilidade de chuva. A seca já dura meses em algumas regiões. E teremos mais um dia quente no Brasil hoje. Faz calor de mais de 30 graus em boa parte do país, apesar de já estarmos perto do inverno. 
On this steamy September night in 2050, shower and thunderstorm activity is offshore here on our live first alert Doppler radar. And of course, way offshore, we have Hurricane Kyle. And now Kyle is expected to miss South Florida, thankfully, as it heads offshore the Bahamas and further north across the waters of the Atlantic, offshore the Carolinas, as a matter of fact, as it loses strength and eventually is expected to move on towards the northeast and become just a remnant tropical storm. So for us, no direct impact. But folks, this time, uh, these days, as you know, we tend to have big time problems with the flooding, no matter how far away this hurricane is offshore. There you see Kyle with its well-defined eye north of the Bahamas. Uh, you see some of the shower and thunderstorm activity that affected us away from Kyle today. But even though the core of this system is going to remain this far offshore, here's our problem. We have the onshore winds produced by the distant hurricane and just the onshore winds is sufficient to produce, well, the flooding that we're seeing, the tidal flood along Miami Beach, again, submerging a good portion of the city, three, four feet of water once more as we have this distant hurricane producing uh, these conditions. Of course, exacerbated by climate change and sea level rise that we're seeing already mid-century here. And this is, of course, expected to worsen.